Hey guys, it's E here from Virginia Grace Living. So, gonna be a little bit busy this weekend putting up some pickles and uh, jalapenos and I'm thinking about starting a pepper ferment to make some hot sauce and a few other things. Have some rabbits that I need to uh, deal with. Um, and it's, you know, kind of the dead of summer. Everything's really coming in good. Uh, and we're picking a lot of tomatoes and cucumbers and okra and all that good stuff the summer crops that we've been looking forward to uh, and been planning all year but right now is a great time to start planning for your fall garden especially if you live in zone 7b like i do i live in virginia zone 7b i'm going to share a few things with you today and a few ways to start planning for your fall garden I'm going to share a schedule, full schedule with you uh, if you're interested. Uh, stay tuned to that part of the video and I'll tell you what I'm growing, when, and, and all that good stuff. So, even though it's in the dead of summer, it's never too, uh, it, you know, this is a great time to start planning, especially if you're going to order seeds and stuff like that that you want to plant. Because fall will be here right before you know it and, uh, and then it's too late. If you've never planted a fall garden, um, and you live in zone 7b like Virginia area um, you're definitely missing out um, because there are some really good stuff really great things that you can grow here that do well here uh, and resist the frost even uh, I grew broccoli collard greens rutabagas uh, kale you know plenty of different things that you can get in and even some things that uh, you might not think of as fall crops. You could get in another round of just because we have so much time until uh, that first frost. So I'll talk about some of those things in the video. Uh, I hope you stay tuned and enjoy. I need to come out here and pick these green beans. I was wondering if these things were ever going to produce anything. They were kind of slow getting started. Um, but that's one of the things if you want to do bush beans... These are climber, uh, you know, pole beans, but bush beans, I just planted a round of those and they only take about 50 something days to produce. And if you're in this climate, you have plenty of time to get another round of those in. And those are really good uh, for a quick production of green beans. Let me just tell you about some of my favorite fall vegetables that we've grown here. Um, I will say collard greens is probably the top of the list. If you don't like greens, then obviously you might not be into that too much. But if you like greens uh, and you like, I don't know, sweet potatoes, something like that, you should grow rutabagas. Uh, rutabagas were probably one of my favorite crops that we grew here um, because it's almost like a two-for-one vegetable. You can harvest the tops and make greens, and then the bottoms when they're ready, they're big. They look like a turnip, but they don't really taste like a turnip. They're kind of sweet fleshed. They're really good cut up and put in soups. You get, we made a mashed rutabagas. Uh, they were really good. Uh, we've made a rutabaga fries really good. And it's just a versatile vegetable and full of nutrients. So it's something that you maximize your space with. And for me, that's huge because, it's, you know, I live in a neighborhood, you know, so as much food as I can grow here. Uh, and pack it in in different spots that's really what I want to maximize and that one you get two for one so another thing that I really enjoyed growing uh, and grew well here would be so broccoli does well here in the fall and it can take all that uh, it can take a lot of cold weather frost I mean we had one that was covered in ice one day and the next day it was fine so Good thing about broccoli too is once you harvest that main head you get a lot of little side shoots that come off the side uh, that's really good uh, you can grow cabbage i've never had a ton of luck with that but i'm going to keep trying um, garlic is really awesome uh, you can grow that in the late fall you plant that in like october and don't harvest that until june or july so um those are good try those out uh and throughout the video i might pop in a few other suggestions Oh, looks like I got some yellow squash here to pick and a couple tomatoes that are ready. So I pick these at that breaker stage a lot of the time, which is they're pink, but um, not fully ripened all the way. And I let them ripen up in the house. Got 
some more over here. I think these are mortgage lifters that I just randomly popped in here. This is a good size. I don't have to get a weight on this one. I just picked a one point or a one pound seven ounce oh, Kellogg's breakfast yesterday. I shouldn't have done that, guys. I should have used my my cutters. I'll get my knife out at least. Let's see if I can get this without destroying that other tomato like I just did on that. Looks like we're going to have some fried green tomatoes tonight. Alright, got that one. Grab that big tomato. That's a nice, crazy, cat face looking mortgage lifter. That one's pretty nice. That one's a little prettier. Alright, let's put that in our basket. And a lot of these these black cherry tomatoes i know i mentioned it in the last video but man these are some productive little suckers and they are good i made a pasta with the bait made a pasta sauce with these the other day if you want the recipe it is on my facebook page i posted that full written up recipe and it is really good you guys should give it a try if you have a ton of cherry tomatoes that pasta is a great way to use them up and I am drowning in them over here, which I'm not complaining because we, we eat them all. Whether we eat them fresh or we cook them down into a sauce, we use them all. Getting some of these uh, orange bananas as well. These are really good. Um, and they're very thick flesh, like aroma and, and, and dense. So I think these would be really good in like a pico de gallo or something like that. I have another one here. It's starting to blush. They are prone to crack, um, but they are an heirloom tomato, so can't really complain too much there. Got another Kellogg's breakfast here. Now, out of all the tomatoes I've tried this year, when this is fully ripe, this is a really good uh, raw eaten tomato. Get some of these Cherokee purples here. These are another really good tomato on a sandwich. Ugh. Beautiful. Doesn't get much better than that, guys. One thing I want to show you guys is this San Marzano tomato is just loaded down. And this is going to make some great pasta sauce. Can't complain about that for a nice little couple minutes of picking stuff in the garden. Beautiful little basket here. I need to do something with these pickles. We got some big ones in here. I'm going to do some chips and some spears. Uh, if you want to see a pickle video sometime, uh, let me know in the comments and I will make that happen. All right. Not going to do it on this one, but if you're interested, let me know and I can make it happen. All right, so I want to talk to you about one of the ways I plan for a fall garden, and it's something that might actually help you guys out a little bit. So uh, if you would like, I will send you a link to my garden planner. All right, so this is a Google uh, Drive document. Uh, I guess, what is it called? Google Sheets, maybe. Um, so you can see here um, that it, you know, it has some good applicability. Uh, I have spring crops, summer crops, fall crops. I even have a uh, bed layout that you can use if you want. I don't. I haven't been using this one as much lately. Uh, and then there's a key on here that has different clip art of, you know, whatever vegetables and stuff you might be interested in planting. You can always go and download new clip art if, if it doesn't have what you need here. But the biggest thing for me is having this schedule to follow. The schedule is really uh, helpful to keep you on track and organized. So guys, um, we talked about some of the fall garden stuff. Guys, I really hope you will take a chance and, uh, and plant one. And don't be afraid. Uh, even if it doesn't go as planned the first time, you're definitely gonna learn something and it'll be worth it in the long run. I learned a lot every, every season. I learned something new and I learned, you know, 
what does good here, what doesn't, you know, particularly maybe my microclimate here in my yard where I have shady spots and different spots that I have to work with. Uh, but I also want to continue to encourage people that if you're in a small space, you can still grow a lot of food. Uh, I'm on a quarter acre, that's it. I don't have a quarter acre garden. I have a, you know, some raised beds in a few different places and then I have a no-till garden in the back. Uh, you're welcome to check out any of the videos and you can see I try to make this as productive as possible here at, at our little homestead. So don't be discouraged if you live in a small spot. Uh, just do what you can where you can. So some of the things that you're going to want to plant are going to be direct sow and some of them are going to want to you know start seeds or buy uh, transplants or you know go to the nursery and buy, buy nursery transplants that you're going to transplant into your garden. That's fully up to you how you want to do that but if you take a look at my schedule here um, it will help you uh, you know it, it kind of goes through and talks about what you would direct sow versus what you would not want to direct sow. Um, now I will say, you know, this is my tentative schedule, so I may not even completely follow my own schedule. I may do things a couple days earlier or later, depending upon, you know, what time availability I have and weather and everything like that. So use this as a loose guide for yourself. Um, you know, it's on you ultimately when you decide to plant what you're going to plant, but hopefully this is a helpful guide for you guys. Um, and yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If there's any questions you have, make sure you leave them in the comments. Um, as always, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And invite all your gardening friends to the channel. Uh, you know, or you know, if there's something you think that I could do better, just tell me. If there's something you'd like to see on the channel, uh, let me know, and uh, I can make it happen. So. God bless, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.